All right, so now let's continue on our PoE play session. So uh, last time we left off, we were trying to get another upgrade on our bow. Didn't really find something I wanted, but that's okay. Uh, do I want an upgrade? We'll see how it feels. Maybe towards the end of this one, we can actually start looking at some other upgrades. But start right off, uh, we have a bunch of NPCs that we can talk to, but uh, there's not really anything that's important. In the very beginning, just go straight to the broken bridge. And we're gonna go right over to the crypt. So, I'm just going to be running for a little bit. There's a mirror of delirium, so we'll go through it, we'll walk through it, and we'll be getting those rewards. Let's see if the rewards are any good. So right now, you can see there's like a weapon one. The only one that's really good is the currency one for the earlier stages of the game. If you get like a chaos orb or something, that could be kind of nice. I, I did hear something drop. Like a sound of something. Oh, it's just one of the uh, cards. So certain loot filters can have sounds. I think this is the default one though. Nothing too special, but. Uh, so if you leave the area, it's better just to hit the little thing where it says like, finish it, and then you can just take your loot and leave. I doubt we'll get a better bow, but you never know. What it would have to have in order for it to be an upgrade is just a bunch of just damage. Massive amount of damage of like a bunch of different elements. So, uh, one thing to note of, as far as the uh, the league mechanic, which is like the whole like corpses thing, uh, you actually have a limit on how many you can pick up. So I wouldn't really bother picking up any items at this point in the game, uh, as far as the corpses go, unless you know exactly what you want, because most of them are going to be a, like a very low roll anyway, so it's kind of like useless. Um, actually, we should try to get this waypoint to the crossroads, because it's going to be kind of our like hub. You don't need to get the broken bridge. But you want this one for sure, the crossroads. Otherwise, you're gonna have to walk back from town since we didn't get the uh, other one. Oops, oh, right. we, we moved something, but it doesn't really matter too much. We've been just ignoring the, uh, the mechanics. So from the uh, Felshire uh, ruins, we're just gonna look for the crypt. And with the crypt, we're gonna get two things. We're gonna get a trial of ascendancy uh, finished over here. And we're gonna get a map. And this is actually kind of a sneak peek at what the end game kind of looks like, which is essentially these maps. Our goal is to get these maps. We pick up these small currencies. These ones aren't really that important. But never skip out on a Chaos Orb. But if it's some of the smaller stuff, yeah. Like Chaos Orbs, Divine Orbs, those, those are like the main currencies. But there are other smaller ones that are worth some too. So yeah, Felshire Ruins to the Crypt, and in the Crypt, we're going to get two things here. So we have the Trial of Ascendancy in the area, and we just got another uh, skill point, and we were going to get more HP, because our damage is really solid right now. So here is the Trial of Ascendancy, located right here. So some of these switches, like I said, some of them do stuff, some of them are just memes. Give us something. Okay, nothing. Just some extra loot. I'm not up to that just yet. And we're done. Shine boldly so that all may crash and recipe. We'll go pick that up as well. Falls. So that is step one done. Now the next thing that we need to do is to get the map. So we're gonna go down the stairs. In the crypt. Oh, we'll grab this as well. That's going to be used for another way we can make money. And when I say money in the game, I don't mean like real life money. I mean like, and this game doesn't have gold. But here we go, container of synths. So we got the map. That's all we need over here. Now we're going to go to a different area on the other side. That's why I wanted to get the waypoint because now we're going to go somewhere else. And... If there's an NPC or I can talk to, to there we go. Courage. Doesn't really matter too much though, because it just tells you what to do. So we can go from the crossroads, and now we're gonna go up. Before we went uh, down to the right, now we're gonna go up onto the left. Oh, the two orbs of fusing, that's good. We should definitely pick that up. That can potentially fuse some items together. So how the system works with these little corpses 
it's not really worth it unless you're uh, solo, like as in you're not going to engage in trade, to pick up some of the smaller stuff. Because like with one one Chaos Orb, which is like almost no investment in time, you can get that in just a minute. Um, in terms of like uh, gaining some sort of currency for profit. Now we're going to go from Crossroads over to the Chamber of Sins level 1. Of evil men continues to plague right now. But um, yeah, the the corpse mechanic where we place them down, we get the items. We did it in the very beginning to get some rare items. Uh, it's not really worth it at all to try to get items uh, until like the end game, specifically once they are higher level. We're actually getting a lot more fusers now, which is great. All right, so we'll talk to the NPC over here, grab the waypoint, and in this map device, what we're going to do is actually take our. Uh, item over here, which is the Maligros map, put it in here, hit activate, and it's going to open it up, and we're going to go in. So this is kind of like what the end game of uh, this game actually looks like. Let's go ahead and level this up. Got some uh, artillery ballistas. Got some scrolls. And our goal of this is to basically find the boss. This is kind of how the end game works. You open up a map in your map device, and that's one. And what's going to happen is uh, we're going to kill a bunch of monsters uh, along the way, and you'll fight a boss at the very end. And if you fight the boss in a certain difficulty, you'll get more rewards, and you'll get a another skill point. The skill point is like a, a map skill point for like the end game. And it does tie a little bit to your power in your character if you want it to, and we're going to make it do it. So you can get extra shrines. You get guaranteed shrines on every single map. You play Last Epoch, or let's say Diablo. Think of it kind of like a greater rift. Although you don't have to kill all the monsters to get to the boss. You can literally just walk straight to the boss and kill the boss, but you'll kind of lose out on all of the stuff that would drop from the monsters, so it's still worth it to kill them. So now we're fighting the boss. Ooh, he's doing some damage. The boss is pretty easy though. Shoot and move, shoot and move. Melt the spider real fast. The craziest part is we could be doing like double damage right now. The reason why we could be doing double damage is I could swap the bow, but I would lose out on chain. The chain is really good for killing multiple monsters. My mana is Black Venom. That's the only item we needed here. We go back, talk to Syl. He'll give us the keys. We'll take the keys. And then now we're going to go down to the Chamber of Sins. Uh, I believe it's level 2 for the Trial of Ascendancy here. Just got to look for the exit. Ooh, we got two orbs of alchemy. Cool. Oh, that's a bunch of little currency. Awesome, awesome. Wait, none of them? Yes, we did. Oh, it, is it is the TikTok stream dead? Did it not reset properly? Sometimes it can glitch out. Alright, let me reset it again. You know what's funny is uh, with TikTok streaming, sometimes it'll require you to enter a capture while you're in the middle of your stream. And like, sometimes you're in a game, so you can't do that, you know? Here, I reset it, so... Thanks for letting me know. I appreciate that, Nuke. All right, now we're going to level two, and there's a uh, Trial of Ascendancy that we want in this area. So yes, Trial of Ascendancy. I said we were alive, though, huh? Must be bugged. All right, there's another hideout if you want a hideout, but you only need one hideout. If you get a different one, it's just a different skin. Tujin. Okay, this one is worth doing. Okay, so if you ever see Tujin, he's worth doing. There's, this is called Expedition. It's another mechanic which will have to be explained. So how this works is you will place these explosives and you'll see they explode in a circle. 
You actually have to read what it does though. Like this one says increase rarity of what monster drops. Each one of these little blue things indicates like um, a modifier and the order does matter. So like the first one will affect all of the rest of them. Rare weapon doesn't matter. So some of these like immune to fire damage, it doesn't matter because we're mostly lightning. But um, let's see, fractured item. Fractured is a, an, uh, a thing that always rolls on the item. This is for 60% increased XP. Doesn't really matter too much. So I just really care about uh, this one over here, which is the increased rarity. So you could just click over here and then you can place it or my default key is V, but I don't know what the default one is. So we're gonna take this one first. I'm gonna try to get both of these in one. No, I can't. So we're gonna get that, treasure that, and you can see the little treasure chests over here. So we're gonna go ahead and open that and then we're gonna open up this one. So the most important thing is hitting this one first because then all the monsters that spawn. And some of these monsters will have ward, which makes it so it seems like you do zero damage, but you have to read the modifiers because if it says they're immune to like fire, cold, lightning damage, uh, well, I don't really do physical damage with this build. So that would essentially brick this. We haven't gotten anything good, but we do get these little small currencies called the Black Scythe Artifacts. You can open up these little chests over here. And you'll see we're getting these small currencies. And what we can do is we can talk to him. He's the best because you can haggle for items. So how this works is if there's something that I want right here, I can offer him uh, less than what he's he's wanting. So this, he wants 86, but I can make him an offer. I can give him like a really low one. If I offer him a really low one, he may get mad. Uh, ideally, if you just go one third about what the item is, he usually won't get mad, but it's kind of RNG. But as far as these items go, is there anything that I really want here? If there isn't, I can reroll if I have an exotic coin. So you can actually just trade the exotic coins too. But these currencies, you can't trade them anymore. You used to be able to. But as far as this goes, are any of these actually worth getting? Um, this one's worth axe attacks. I'd have to use my little scanner tool. The orbs of fusings could be nice. The vault orbs could be nice. Uh, but more than likely, I couldn't buy these. I can, I can make him an offer. So I, I can try to offer him 33. So you'll see that the uh, gauge kind of changes as you make offer. So I can't get that one because I'd have to do more of these. But honestly, right now, there isn't something that's like so good that I'm like, oh, man, I absolutely need to get this like right now. So, I mean, maybe we can get this. I'm just going to show you guys just so we can get it. All right, there we go. So we just got some scour orbs just like that. So he gives currency and currency is always like one of the best things in uh, Path of Exile to get. All right, so now let's keep on going. But yeah, that mechanic is called Expedition. If you like doing it, then uh, it can be a form of like end game content for you. It's level one, we're at level two. All right, oh yeah, we got distracted by Tujin. So that's the only one that I like doing out of all the Expedition, but the other ones aren't completely useless. It's just, I like that one. So these cranks over here are timed, which means, well, you gotta be fast. Because if you're not fast, you're gonna have to walk all the way back and it's really painful. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go this way, I think. And this will just open up this. I don't think we actually needed to open up that one, but. There is a fine there we go. So we got all of these finished over here. The former which is, awesome. is wisdom, the latter is fear. Good stuff. And then, after we do that, we have a, a boss coming up. Actually, I have a couple bosses coming up over here. We're gonna go all the way around. This is called incursion. It's something that uh, it requires a lot of explanation, but you kind of build these like temple things. Uh, some of these I'll explain later as we go on. So now we're gonna go to the den. I'm gonna go ahead and get this over here. The waypoint. This is Rog, this is another expedition. It's the same mechanic where you have to read things because if it says immune to basically all the elemental damages or if you're playing a build that only does one damage type, ours does triple, so it's not as worrisome. This game's confusing compared to Last Epoch? Definitely, but uh, we're doing a new player guide, Aaron, so if you need like any guidance, you can ask me now or if on YouTube, you can uh, watch like the full walkthrough. That's what we're actually doing right now. I always like to do these new player guides because one, it uh, makes me better at the game, I think, when I have to, like, explain to myself, like, you know, why we're doing things a certain way, or I'll have to look it up, because sometimes while playing, someone will be like, hey, does, can you do this? And it'll be, like, a, something I didn't think of, and that's how, like, I get better, too. So I like it. Kill this, like, lead over here. Q. 
keep going. Hit leveled up. All right, and we are at the Ashen Fields. Let's get the waypoint, and we should be going to the right. I think we can just follow the uh, path. Oh, this one's locked. Oh, an orb chance. Pick these up. Gonna be useful later for getting some more maps. What the heck are these things? These trees look so strange though. I'm not okay, up to that it looks like we're just gonna go follow the path. Okay, so once we get to the forest encampment from the Ashen Fields, there's gonna be a boss. You guys remember Cruz was actually one of the NPCs from Act 2. He was kind of a mean NPC, but we didn't really like go into the lore for the walk through here. And he's dead. No. Alright, so now we get to talk to him for a reward. We'll also go straight to the northern forest here. Which will teleport us to the left of the uh, thing. And so over here there are two different areas. We're actually going to try to hug the left side first. Uh, it is important that you do get the waypoint, but you can't miss it because it teleports you right there. So I believe we want to go left first. And what we're looking for is I believe the dreaded thicket. And we are going to need to collect these fireflies. And it is seven of them. Usually what happens is you'll continue and then you'll have to come back here. But if you do it this way, it's faster to collect the fireflies then go forward. So that's the causeway, we don't want that. We want the dreaded thicket, I believe is what it's called. It's not all the way down to the right. But if it is, it is. Well, it's, it is. Maybe. Oh, nope. Okay. So it should be over here then. There it is. Alright, so Dread Thicket. And now we gotta collect seven fireflies. And there's also like a quick uh, boss that you can kill over here. Kill that boss as well. So yeah, just click on the yellow exclamation marks. There's going to be a total of seven. Crafting recipe. The fireflies. You have to these. You have to click twice because the first one it drops. Then you got to pick it up. Right. So what are we at right now? All right, probably got too much, too much stuff. Enough room, I don't really care about these right now. Actually, you know what? We can hold on to them. Let's see, we probably have some like garbage rings. Throw away real quick. There we go. Alright, so what are we at right now? Uh, is that five? Five? Okay, so two more. Two more fireflies, and then we're done here. But there is also a boss that we can defeat. Up into the right will be the last firefly. Yep, that should be the last one. I'm not up to that just yet. Okay, or it could be all the way in the bottom. Unlucky. That's three packs. Okay, they're all gone. So we still have to collect one more firefly, which we'll do in a second. I'm just going to go to the Dennis Despair because there's a Hrothkull, there's a boss, the mother of despair, and we can kill it very fast and give them a quick reward. And 
they are dead. But we still need to collect the last firefly. Then we can teleport back. Unless I'm blind and I, I missed out on one. Nope, looks like we have six. So there should be one more firefly. Let's see if we go down here. So it's either over here. Oh, there it is. There's the last one. Ooh, level up. Okay. So now, I've got another skill point and we can get some more HP. Uh, let's see what else we have. We can have skills cost instead uh, life instead of 30% of mana. However, I actually don't want that because this over here, later we can get it and it's perfectly fine, but it gives us a plus another thousand evasion rating on full life and increased movement speed. So that would actually ruin that. So we're not gonna get that. Uh, another thing that we could consider getting is removing these two points right here. In fact, we can actually remove these three points because this is connected over here because you always have to be connected to the starting point of the tree. But we could remove these three points right here and then we can get uh, like these points over here and the reason why is this gives us attack damage leech does life and mana and the reason why we got this one first is because this one's very far away but uh, that is something that we will eventually do and we can use these refund points in fact um we could probably do it now what's our leech so our leech right now is 0.4 and 0.5 okay this also gives us a uh, total recovery but i'm gonna go ahead and refund some passives you don't have to do this but i'm gonna go ahead and refund those I'm going to put these points over here. So now we have Life Leech, so I get to get more HP. I only really need these two. Uh, the other one that I really like to get is 10% of Leech is instant. So that one is really nice to get. So I highly recommend that one. That one is really great. So now we're going to go talk to the NPCs. Oops. We need to make some room here. That's fine. I don't really care about that. That's not a big deal. I just need the room to accept the, uh, the passive point. Yes, oh, she's giving a... us a reward. Uh, this is for a quest that is optional, so it's not necessary. And if you want to like select any of your hideouts, you can choose. I have a lot more uh, because I played the game, but you'll have at least one. All that matters is you have one hideout, and that'll be used for your end game. So we talked also to the NPCs, just so they don't have the exclamation mark. And then we have another passive point. So yeah, like I said, I like the one where it's 10% is instant. It makes it so it, it doesn't have to like go up. It's just like instantly always going to be at the high highest and we could probably swap this uh for something else uh potentially which is a granite flask which will give us extra attack speed and will also grant us a big boost armor what we can do with this also is just put this augmentation and we get more chargers let me see if this works and so this i do have to manually activate but it's going to give us an insane amount of armor let me show you how much armor it actually gives us so we're going to go back to the northern forest let me show you guys where that is because now that we have our fireflies that's what we needed so yeah, we're gonna go over here and I'll show you how much damage reduction this flask gives us. So right now, the estimated physical damage reduction is 31%. I popped this and now we have 66% damage reduction from physical hits, which is pretty massive. And I probably don't need uh, a mana flask anymore, which is awesome because you can see our mana, it just won't go down at all. Unless we are shooting and hitting nothing because we have uh, the leech now, which is awesome. Oh, Don, we did one, I think, last week. I usually stream a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh, but uh, it hasn't ha piqued my interest. There's a couple things that I wouldn't mind playing, but I really wish they had a, a bigger prize pool for their tournaments. That would incentivize me a lot more. But now we're in the causeway, and so at the causeway, we are looking for one item, and you really can't miss it, but it is a quest item. And it'll give you another skill point which will be good good to have can maybe actually invest into getting two of the newer gems oh, this is uh another contract for the uh other mechanic that we'll show off later the heist mechanic Okay, so now we're gonna go over here. Oh yeah, there is a mode. You're talking about hardcore. If you die, yeah, you lose everything. Yep. It's pretty mean. But it does make the game exciting for some more people. 
Now you don't need the waypoint at Causeway unless you die, but this area is pretty easy. The act boss, I'd still say it's a relatively easy act boss, but sometimes you can also get really lucky, unlucky with evasion based characters and you just take too much damage. Is there? What's our accuracy rate? 25? Okay. So we have to make sure our HP doesn't exceed our accuracy. If, it, if it's starting to do that, then we need to invest into some more accuracy. Alright, so Kishar's lockbox, this is the item. Like I said, you literally can't miss it. It's right before usually you get to that the Vol City. And in the Vol City, we're looking for um, the entrance to the next zone. And there's an NPC that requires the fireflies, but we already have the fireflies. And your progress is lost, is that true? Yeah, if you, if you die, if you're doing hardcore, like just like in Diablo, you lose your character. Now, I believe in PoE it goes to standard, and in the last epoch, your character, uh, if it's like a hardcore, it goes to non-hardcore. I'm not up to that just yet. I'm going, we're just one shot and everything. I think we went too far. Usually it's about at the waypoint. Is there any game I'm not good at? Well, usually in a lot of games, like, uh, I don't do like the races for PoE. I haven't even really attempted to do it. But the one game I never got like the t like a top rank hot as League of Legends. So now we're gonna go from over here. Now she takes the fireflies and we can open this. But I used to play like so many different games. Like I went to MLG for Halo. I used to play in the COD ranked uh, mode that they had, and you can get masters in it. Then it was like uh, there's like pro series masters for COD. I played a lot of competitive Call of Duty, which was like so different than Diablo. But uh, I've also placed rank one in Heroes of the Storm, and then also on Diablo, obviously, which is well, I would say at the moment most of my followers probably know me for Diablo. But you know, sometimes people follow for like other games. On Overwatch, we've been Grandmasters on every role. But Le League of Legends is the one game where all I hit was gold and I just stopped playing the game. Haven't passed gold. I think the games lasted way too long too. Like I like this isometric look. That's one thing that like attracted me to League of Legends, but like it takes too dang long. Like half the time in League of Legends, you're, shoot you're, you're fighting NPC monsters. Like I just want the, the action, the combat of killing other people. And then sometimes when one person gets a bunch of items and they're fed, it just becomes kind of unwinnable, it feels like. And that's one thing I don't really like with that, the game. Where, like, it creates an unfair advantage. But technically, they earned that advantage. But they can earn that advantage by beating your teammates. But over here in the Temple of Decay, what we're looking for is basically just stairs. Eventually, you'll get to the, the boss. And this boss is pretty easy. It has a mechanic where you have to dodge these giant purple lasers, but they're very easy to see. Is League hard? Well, it's not necessarily hard. I think it's hard because you have to sit in the game for 40 minutes. Like, oh, if you've ever played a t any team-based game, Overwatch, uh, you, sometimes you get people that, like, absolutely are just terrible to play with. Like, they're just like, I want to go do it this way. Two people are having problems, right? Or with like Path of Eggs on Diablo, I don't have to worry about that, which is what I really like. But when you have a game that's heavily team based and you're not playing like a team, it kind of sucks. But what's weird is like when I grew up with Halo, that really never happened where people would just be like, I'm just going to throw the game now. And it just, it just legitimately like, didn't really happen. People always tried. It was, it's weird. But now we're going to go to Temple Decay level two. We another skill point, uh, and so at this point we could actually have a lot of different options. This is uh, for crit strike chance and accuracy, but we can just type in the word accuracy. We can also just get dex, that will also give us accuracy, but we can see if there's anything else that uh, may pique our interest. This one gives us extra accuracy and damage, so this one's not bad. It'll still kind of maintain that high accuracy and still give us some damage and give us increased attack speed. So I think these are all great. And then we can go look at the bow mastery which uh, we can get increased accuracy per green sock on the bow if we need that. But other than that, 
Um, there's also increases damage to, or increases and reduction to projectile speed applied to damage with bows. So sometimes there's modifiers uh, that will give you plus like 30% like a uh, bow uh, like a projectile speed. And that will also give you damage. What's interesting is slower projectiles actually gives you way more damage because it's a more multiplier versus an additive. So it's actually a massive difference to actually slow them down, but then you would want that because then you do even less damage. Oh, something cool, I guess, just dropped. Oh, it's a six socket. Two six sockets. Okay, we, we got to make some room for it, though. All right, so I don't know what... This is probably worth nothing, but let me see if I have enough room. Uh, I don't really need any of these essences right now. But these six socket, I don't need this either. These six socket, um, these aren't like super rare or anything. It just makes a sound because it's supposed to let me know to pick them up. So I'm gonna show you since we need to make room anyways. So a six socket, not six link, but just six sockets in the item. You can go to the NPC and you can trade them and I'll show you what it gives you. So it gives you seven jewelers orbs. These are actually really great. They're not super, super rare, so don't feel like you need to hoard them at all. But it's a six socket. Again, it's not linked. If it was linked, then I would not go to the NPC and get 20, 20 fusers for it. You can get 20 fusers for it. But uh, it's better just to trade them to other players for a couple chaos orbs. It's much better. Uh, we could maybe use a better quiver, actually. Let's see if we got a better one. We have some damage, some good life, double resistances, two damages. That's actually not too bad. Um, we could maybe use this later. Let's see how much damage we like lose or gain. Oh, actually, it's a huge difference. Wait, why did it change so much? We go from 45 to 67. What? Is it, why does this, does this one just like lower our stats? What the heck is going on? We go from 6,100 to 4,000, wait, I, I, I genuinely am kind of confused why this is like lowering our DPS. I don't know. <laughs> like we don't benefit, oh, is it because it's giving us, oh, I actually know why now. So it's giving us too much HP to the point where we don't reach the accuracy threshold because this grants us 72% or 72 maximum life which at that point exceeds the amount of accuracy required so now we're going to need to really focus in on that accuracy so we'll get some more accuracy nodes for sure so we don't lose out on that 40 percent more damage i was kind of confused on that so we're just barely at that requirement been through every metal rank it doesn't matter oh he's saying in uh, league of legends yeah well i wish th that game had an action rpg because they already have like items right <laughs> they already have items they have levels they have the skills uh there is actually going to be a new action rpg so it'll be like diablo from from their team and i don't know what it's called they're they were also working on a fighting game too we obviously already have Valorant and stuff, and it's cool to see what they uh, come up with. I like just seeing companies that were successful making one game make a completely different game. Right, so now we're going to go down some stairs. I don't really need to grab these essences, it's totally fine now, because these are still going to be considered lower tier essences, which require stacks to actually rank them up. Let's go grab the crafting recipe and just keep on going until we get to the next area for the mouse. It's just another s set of stairs, but just keep on going. You'll eventually get to it. Some of the golem. Keep going. All right, is this it? There you go. So we're, now we're in our Carly's web. So as far as this boss fight goes, there's going to be these p purple lasers, and you'll see them before they come out. But that's the main thing that you don't want to get hit by. So this is Silk. Oh, he was another NPC. And he thinks he can control the spider. So yeah, that's basically the only thing you need to kind of watch out for, those purple lasers. So, he thought he was going to be the god, like 
control the spider, but the spider's like hungry, so not gonna be happening. Oh, you're talking about Overwatch metal ranks. Ah, um, I think there's a pretty massive difference between like bronze and like what would be the, what's next? Uh, what's the other metal rank? The last metal rank is what gold, right? Or is platinum considered like a, a metal rank? Ooh. But even at like high ranks, sometimes you just get people that want to troll. I don't know what happens. Alright, but yeah, we just melted the boss. I absolutely destroyed it. But yeah, the only thing you gotta watch out for is once those purple lasers come out, you move. We got Strat Mitch. Oh, these are face breakers. Now these can be worth something if they happen to roll pretty high. So they roll anywhere from 600 to 800. Ours is 678, so that's on like the higher end. So that's the the stat that rolls on that you kind of want to look out for. Um, we can get this one where it's reduced damage taken over time. It doesn't really matter though. These ones aren't what I would consider very important. Uh, right now, the only thing that's important is getting that immunity to freeze. Cause that will absolutely just get you killed instantly. And uh, he's going to be pretty much the end of that act, but we gotta get back to the next town. Cause just how Path of Exile is. After you kill the boss, you walk through and then you get to the next zone. There's that more of that soul fight. You can click on it if you want to. It's, it's for an account called Delve, which you go deep down and you gotta follow a little cart. And uh, it gives you light. Like a light radius if you play Diablo is basically what it is. And if you go too far away from it, you will die. It's kind of like how that mechanic works. But that does scale infinitely, so like you can't really beat that mechanic. But each one of these like mechanics of like how something interacts for a form of endgame content, each one of those can take several hours to explain. So I'm not going to explain every single one. I'm just going to explain the one that I like. And the one that I like is you just open open up these boxes and monsters come out and you kill them. It's like the most straightforward one. So now we're in the Sarn encampment. Can't see so now we're going to go ahead and take the waypoint. And now we have finished Act 7. And you can see the game is getting faster and faster. This act is about half the time that it takes us to do some of the other acts. But we're going to go ahead and end it for this part. So if you guys enjoyed part seven, act seven, drop a like your way out. We only have act eight, nine, and ten. And again, these are going to be a lot shorter. But thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next part. Peace out.